70 of 2023, second reading. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I beg to move that the game Gambling Control Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 70 of 2023, be now read a second time. Mr. Speaker, sir, the Gambling Control Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 70 of 2023, was published in the Kenya Gazette um, Supplement Number 212 of 2023. The bill was considered by our colleagues in the National Assembly, and on the 6th of December 2023, they passed it, and thereafter the bill was referred here to the Senate for consideration. Mr. Speaker, sir, this bill seeks to provide for the regulation of betting, casinos, and other forms of gambling, authorization of prize competitions and public lotteries for the establishment of a gambling regulatory authority of Kenya for the imposition of tax on betting and other forms of gambling. Mr. Speaker, you are very much aware that gambling is here with us and we must learn to live with it because unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, this is an industry which, to the best of my knowledge, we are still struggling as a country. The good thing, though, is that we are, it's not a challenge that is unique to us as Kenya alone. World over, control of casinos and gambling activities poses a challenge to almost all administrators and administrations, uh, rather, Mr. Speaker. You know, for example, Mr. Speaker, that many sporting teams have betting companies as their shirt sponsors. But in the English Premier League, for example, they have given themselves and all teams have been given three seasons in total to exit having betting companies as their shirt sponsors. Therefore, it points out to the fact, Mr. Speaker, that this is a concern that is global, that you have to learn how to live with this uh, industry and adjust your sales towards this wind. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, we haven't done so well as a country. You know that about three, four, five years ago, Kenya began the imposition of taxes on betting. At that time, the thinking was we could use taxes in 2018 as a deterrence to keep young people from either betting or being addicted to it altogether. What a terrible mistake, Mr. Speaker, because soon after, while we made it possible and made it difficult, because nowadays in Kenya, when you bet, I don't understand betting that much, Mr. Speaker, because I don't gamble, for example. Uh, I'm just a, a good sportsman who knows that winning and losing depends on how you are prepared for the day. And sometimes it falls into your favor, sometimes it's away. And on a day like today, Mr. Speaker, I wish the good old Arsenal can beat Bayern Munich. But if you speak to other people, they'll tell you that uh, they have already placed a bet and they know what needs to happen. So, Mr. Speaker, if you're betting in Kenya, you as a better, the minute you place the bet, like Senator Sifuna is now telling me he has already placed a bet, he has already been deducted part of that money. And if you were to win there will also be a deduction because it tells you that our thinking as a country is that we can use tax as a deterrence so that many young people don't engage themselves. Unfortunately, what have our young people done and the people that are engaged in betting? They have actually moved on from betting using platforms that are uh, available here and able to be controlled here in Kenya. They are now betting online with companies whose jurisdiction remains unknown, even globally. I know many young people, and uh, while well, I say this, I say it as a very difficult time because I have a young man, actually, who's a good friend and a supporter who's lying in the morgue as we speak. 
He used to work at an Mpesa shop. Went to some betting site. I'm told it's called Avieta. You know, when I, when I was told the, the story, uh, Mr. Speaker, then I, I realized that I have grown old. I think because uh, I, I sit among these people who are older than me, I've always imagined that I'm still young. But the reality is dawning on me that there are many things that I don't know, things that uh, could not be said of a few years back. So I hear there is a betting, either platform or whatever, and when they place their bet there, they lost over 120,000 money, which would otherwise uh, be referred to as a float of the shop they were running. And since they feared the owner of the shop, they decided to take their own life. The story is replicated across the country. Many, either offline or online betting sites that are available and are being now used by young people because with the absence of, you know, when you bet on, say, an M-Pesa or a locally regulated platform, the tax uh, revenue people are able to keep track of what you're doing and therefore are able to recover this tax. But many of these young people I have pointed out, Mr. Speaker, are now betting online and paying using either their cards or whatever other forms of payment, Madam Speaker, using channels that are unknown to the government, uh, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, even our regulation of the same uh, is limited. And this is, again, like I have pointed out, not a challenge unique to Kenya. These gaming sites are so advanced in their gaming machines such that even if you are to block their IP address, they have the ability to generate a new one within seconds. Countries that are far more advanced than us uh, uh, technologically, Mr. Speaker, have not been able to successfully regulate it. Therefore, this is an attempt to shift our thinking and know that because it is almost impossible to deter, because betting is a matter of personal choice, people decide to either bet or not to bet. And therefore, you must make ways of living and surviving with this uh, phenomena that is here with us, uh, Mr. Speaker, so that you are in a position and are able to either control, manage it, uh, Mr. Speaker, or guide it in a way that provides a good platform uh, for you as an administration or as a government, uh, Mr. Speaker, to regulate this activity. Therefore, this bill is providing us with this uh, framework, uh, Mr. Speaker, because of the challenge that um, I have just explained. Issues of tax evasion, uh, issues of underage gambling. You know, any person today with an access to the computer, uh, Mr. Speaker, can actually participate in gambling activities. Because, like I have pointed out, some of these sites are actually online. And there is no regulation on age who can access uh, these sites and uh, who cannot, uh, Mr. Speaker. There is also, Mr. Speaker, despite the fact that there are very enhanced monitor, uh, monitoring mechanisms uh, for these gaming initiatives, it is crucial at this time to create a safe, fair, and socially responsible gaming environment. Basically an admission, like the rest of the world has had to do, that gaming, gambling is here to stay with us. And there are people who will gamble either way. Therefore, the best thing to do is for you to set up a fair and a good environment and regulate it properly, Mr. Speaker, so that it is done in a manner that you can keep sight, keep track, be able to assist people if there are issues of addiction, for example, place the responsibility. In fact, Mr. Speaker, I was hoping, because further down the bill, and I have taken time to quickly scan through the report of the uh, Departmental Committee on Labor, and the chair is here, he can correct me if I'm wrong, I was hoping that we could actually impose certain responsibilities socially on these gaming companies, such that if you have an addict, by law in other jurisdictions, Mr. Speaker, in other jurisdictions that have understood this concept, what they do is that there is a percentage of their revenue that is purely dedicated, Mr. Speaker, into managing, Mr. Speaker, addictions. And you're forced that uh, go through your systems, check if Senator Osotsi make this much and is spending a particular amount on gambling, then you are flagged by the system and they are able to tell and say this particular individual is living 
dangerously in the gambling space and therefore they organize conferences for you and some training on their own budget as a gambling company. That demand is placed on you. I, 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 it is my sincere hope that perhaps maybe even as we discuss this bill, uh, people can think about how to make better demands uh, from this uh, company so that we don't end up having many young people uh, losing the opportunity. Mr. Speaker, we know that even as we struggled, for example, uh, you know the very, I don't want to mention the name so that uh, I'm not accused of using premium platform that is parliament of promoting the activities of one company against the others. But one of the most prominent companies that came out and made betting known across the country, when they had difficulties here in Kenya, they went up out and set up shop in Tanzania, just next door here. And because Tanzania as a country managed this issue better than us, today that company does almost 10 times the revenue they used to do when they were here in Kenya, Mr. Speaker. Despite the fact that Kenyans are known to have more disposable income than our colleagues in, Tanz uh, in Tanzania. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, they sponsor their local leagues in many sports. Part of the teams that they sport participate even in the uh, African Champions League and go as far as the semis and the quarterfinals on account of prudent use of these resources that have been generated. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, like I have observed, as a country, we must make a decision and know how to live with this industry rather than to try and curtail it. Because if there is a lesson that we have learned the last few years, <coughs> excuse me, then it is that you cannot curtail the operations of this industry. You can only learn how to do it better. There is an idea, Mr. Speaker, that is proposed in the bill, which is to establish clear guidelines on how you protect also consumers from exploitation. I've explained that. And also, you combat issues of money laundering. Gambling companies and gaming casinos, Mr. Speaker, are avenues that have been used as well uh, to money launder, you know. And therefore, it is important to regulate this environment. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, the creation of the Gambling Regulatory Authority will provide an oversight and enforcement, promoting a safer gambling environment. Additionally, the authorization of prize competition and public lotteries will offer opportunities for economic growth and entertainment. Further, the imposition of tax on betting and gambling activities will generate significant revenue for public and social services initiative, which ultimately will benefit us as a country. You know that there has been an attempt to do this through the sports fund, uh, Mr. Speaker. Unfortunately, previously, even after the setting up of the sports fund, 80% of that funds were used to do other things that are non-sporting related. I am particularly impressed that uh, in one of the executive orders of 2023, the president did direct that uh, the sports fund be wholly dedicated for use of development of sporting facilities, and that's part of what is being used to expand the sporting arenas across the country. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, I'll quickly just scan through the various uh, sections of the law. Part one of the bill provides for the preliminary matters, which are interpretations, the terms that are being used. Of course, parts two and part three, all the way to part five, Mr. Speaker, provide for the various functions, laying out what are the functions of the national government in terms of policy, what are the functions of the county governments in terms of regulating and controlling places like casinos. You know very well that there are village casinos nowadays. And, uh, colleague senators, you must keep vigil and be vigilant even in your various uh, uh, counties because people are setting up funny joints and uh, they are not very impressive videos that are coming out of the activities that happen in such places. Those are duties, actually, of our county governments, and it's good that this is being provided. A county government is being reminded of their core responsibilities where they regulate even the operation and give local licensing for this casino. Part four of the bill, Madam Speaker, which consists of clause 26, uh, 6 to 7, it provides for the establishment now of this authority. What are their functions, what are the operations, the guidelines, how they'll conduct the business, pretty much um, what we do when we set up any board as we have done. Clause 28 to 49, uh, Mr. Speaker, provide to 
on issues of licensing and permits. Uh, part clause 50 to 57, it provides also for the control of the lotteries, uh, Madam Speaker. Part 7 of the bill, which is uh, clause 64 to 66, controls, provides the provisions on casino, slot machines uh, that are all over, littered across the country. You find, uh, Mr. Speaker, in the villages, these things are becoming a scene where in village centers at 4 o'clock you find women and men trooping, all of them, and sometimes dropping all their day's earnings into some funny box hoping to strike uh, wealth or sudden wealth, Mr. Speaker. And most of the time, <laughs> very little uh, happens or comes out of it, uh, Mr. Speaker. Part 8 of the bill, which is close 67 to 80, provides for online gambling, including licensing, control payment of prizes, and remittance of winning, financial reporting, and dispute resolution. This is one of the hardest, and I've explained why. Because of the complexity of the online machine and engines that these people use that can generate uh, uh, even new IP addresses within minutes of closing the other, uh, Mr. Speaker, and young people are able uh, to access. Remember, we lead a very tech-savvy society uh, nowadays, Mr. Speaker, and therefore they are able to move quite quickly and uh, resort, uh, resolve these issues. Part 10 of the bill, which is close 87, uh, provides the guidelines for advertising. Where can you do these adverts? Uh, how to do them so that you don't expose it to our young uh, children, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker? It is important to guide how this is done without necessarily as well curtailing um, uh, the business activities. Because like I pointed out, Mr. Speaker, even as you try as a country to regulate and become difficult and hard at these activities, the rest of the world move way ahead of us and are taking advantage. There are billions of money that leaves this country on a yearly basis, uh, Mr. Speaker, that are funding the social and prosper prosperous activities of other societies because we have not been able to do what this bill is asking us to do, where we imagine we can curtail an industry such as this. Part 12 of the bill, Mr. Speaker, which is close 92 to 111, are just uh, provisions of the offenses and the penalties for violations of the various clauses of this bill. Part 13 contains miscellaneous provisions and uh, translation. Close 92, Mr. Speaker, and allow me to read it. I found it quite interesting, which is, uh, allows, which is about a person who being the owner or occupier of a licensed gambling premise or electronic site who allows such premise to be used for other unlicensed activities. What is a fine? Only one million shillings. I hope the committee can move away from this. I have said times without number that unfortunately at state law office or sometimes even here in parliament, People, I think, copy-paste certain sections of law and just paste it there without reflection. It is an abuse of our legislative mandate also as parliamentarians for you to come and pass a law. You know how much money we are talking about here. And you're saying that tomorrow, if I went and opened a casino on Gong Road and I'm minting millions illegally, then... The only fine that I can be charged by law is one million shillings. You know what I'll do? I will never even pay for the license. I will tell you, find me every day. Because they make more than a million every day. Therefore, I hope that as our committee, sometimes you go through many of these bills. Don't just tick the boxes. I have said it many times, that many of these people don't reflect and internalize what laws we are passing. And I hope that as a, as a, as a house we can rise up above this and set a fine that somebody knows that indeed if you engage in certain illegal activities, then there is a consequence to it. Some of these industries are worth billions. Therefore, when you tell uh, a Russian mobster who has come and uh, set up something here, Mr. Speaker, that the only match you can find them is a million shillings, then they are excited and they say, oh, well, that's only 365 million in a year they, while they make more than... Far more than that. Therefore, 
Mr. Speaker, I hope when we come to Committee of the Whole, uh, Mr. Speaker, we shall be able to vary uh, the fines. Senator Osotsi, you are normally very good at uh, drafting amendments. Uh, I hope you, you are taking notes and we will be able to help us as a House to do this better. Uh, therefore, Mr. Speaker, with those very many remarks, I want to hear the opinions of colleagues. I also want to point out another area that I have noted as uh, having challenge with the drafting is where boards are being set up and there is only one slot for a representative of COG, all the 47 counties. And committees of the House bring their report and they are okay with it. I am not okay with that. It's not about saying. I don't serve in committees. It is you members that serve in committees. I want reports of committees already amending those provisions. And I will support you. Because it's unfair that you have the PS for Treasury, you have the PS, I don't know for what, you have the representative of AG, all people who are thinking in a particular way, facing off against one individual to represent the interest of counties. It's not fair. We are failing in our duty as a Senate. And I expect that when, as a committee, you have a responsibility to go through a legislation such as this, you don't return to the House a report okaying such provisions. Reduce. I have told you many of these boards, people just sit down and they copy and paste without applying their minds and appreciating that Kenya has since moved. The devolved system of government is here with us to stay. And therefore, I hope that when we are considering such legislations, Mr. Speaker, I will see at least near equal, if not equal, number of representatives between the national and the county governments, especially if it is a body that will oversee operations of activities that touch on the functions of both counties and national government. With those very many remarks, Mr. Speaker, I beg to move.